Hello everyone, my name is Anna Warper, and today we are going to be starting a dramatic reading of the second book in the Time Warp Trio series, The Not-So-Jolly Roger. See, that is the pirate. Okay. Written by John Sadzevac. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that name. <laughs> Anywho. Let's, uh, start with chapter one, because that's where you start. <coughs> chapter one. I thought you said you read the book, said Sam. I looked over at Sam and Fred, swaying in the tops of two coconut trees next to mine. We were thirty feet above the ground. I grabbed my tree tighter. I did, I said weakly. I... I closed my eyes so I couldn't see just how far up we were. Well, what happened this time, Mr. Magic? asked Fred. We didn't even open the book. We were just goofing around in your room. Now we're making like monkeys at the top of these coconut trees on a deserted island. Maybe it was something you said, said Sam. Waves crashed on the beach. I smelled the salt I smelled the salt air. I opened one eye and looked at Sam and Fred. Sam's glasses hung from one ear. Fred met Meat's cap was twisted backward. They kind of looked they kind of looked like monkeys hanging coconut hugging coconuts. If I hadn't been so scared I would have laughed. I said I read the book. I didn't say I understood it. Oh, great, said Sam, trying to hang on to his coconut and fix his glasses at the same time. So you're telling us you don't know where we are? I looked around at the stretch, at a long stretch of blue ocean. The stag hung high in the blue ocean. Ocean. The hot sun hung high in the blue sky. I tried to guess what time we might be. Where are we? Where are we? I don't even know when are we. I don't know. I don't even know when we are. Ah! Screamed Sam. A red and blue parrot flew by and screeched back. Moaned Sam. Shipwrecked castaways! Robinson Crusoe's in time and space! We have no idea where we are! Ah! Get a grip! said Fred. I wish for buried treasure. The book sent us here. Fred started to climb down a street. It doesn't take Einstein to figure out somewhere around here there's buried treasure. We are going to die, said Sam. Don't, don't say I didn't warn you, because where there's buried treasure, there's pirates. We are dead meat, shark food. Well, look at the bright side, said Fred. If you're dead, you won't have to go to school on Monday. Sam gave his glasses a push. Ha, 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 you're so funny, I forgot to laugh. Fred started to slide down the tree trunk. What's the big deal? We find the treasure, dig it up, say hocus, say the hocus pocus stuff, and, and we go back home, millionaires. Well, I said, what's this well, said Sam. I don't like the sound of this well. Well, the book says there are lots of ways to travel in time, I said, but there are only two ways, but there are only two ways to get back to our time, is to find the person who has the book in the in this time. But 
What about the all-purpose time warper spell? said Fred. I shook my head. It only works going backward. We have to find the book to get home. Sam knocked his head on the nearest coconut. Oh, fine! That's just fine! I mean, that should be easy! Let's... Thanks to the... Thanks to Lay Brain Treasure Hunter here, there aren't... There aren't that many people to ask for the book! Let's say We could ask this coconut! We could ask the seagull! We could ask the ocean! We could ask the... Uh-oh. What's an oh no? I asked. Sam pointed out to the ocean. We could see the front of a sailing ship appearing from around the edge of the island. Hey, it looks like a ship, said Fred. Bring guess as what kind of ship, Einstein, said Sam, and the first two don't count! We clutched our trees and watched the front of our sh ship into what looked like a huge wooden ocean liner, except the ocean liner had cannons, and it was flying the flag in its back, a black flag with a white skull. Oh no, said Fred. Uh, excuse me. He went up the tree fast. Chapter 2. Well, the pirates stop anchor and load their robo, maybe I should back up and explain how three guys have we three guys happened to find ourselves up in the coconut trees and in big trouble two hundred and seventy-five years before our time. It was just about a week after the last time we traveled through times, and that was more than two thousand years before this time, which is a later is a later time if you're just reading this for the first time in your own time, which Oh, forget it. Let, let me start once more. Last week, my time, I got a birthday present from my Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe is a magician. He gave me a book with straight silver writing on it. The front of the book said, The Book. When Fred opened the book, it transported my two best friends, Fred and Sam and me, to King Arthur's time. We met a bunch of knights, a dragon, and a giant, and stuff like that. But you could read about that some other time. To get back to this time, the week after we got back from back to our time, Fred and Sam came over to my house to check out the book again. I've been thinking about this time travel stuff, said Fred, and I think we should go somewhere worth our while said Fred. Fred sat on my bed wearing all his, we still wearing his baseball uniform, tossing his baseball and catching it. Kids in those magic books I've read, they're always so dumb. They always wish for exciting adventures or some garbage like that. And they never take anything useful with them, like a machine gun or a jet. I say, we wish for a pile of money and come back millionaires. Sam looked up from his comic book. No way! It would never work! If you have ever made it to the end of those magic books, you would know that magic is very tricky. Like Joe's uncle said, be careful what you wish for, you might get it. We could wish for a pile of money, end up in a bit, end up at, in a bank, and get shot by Jesse James. I sat at my desk, trying to perfect my disappearing quarter trick. Perfect my disappearing quarter trick. Sam's right. It's not like faking people out with coin tricks. Let's just be a little more careful this time and figure out exactly what we're going to wish for. I looked at my midnight blue book on my desk. Magic 
can backfire on you even when you're trying to be good, said Sam. And it will definitely mess you up if you're greedy. So, Mr. Know-it-all, what do you want to wish for? Said Fred, pulling his baseball cap down over his eyes. I think we should go visit some famous historical figure and see what he, they were really like. Fred threw his ball up it, to the ceiling and caught it. Go visit some famous historical figure? Get out of here. You should be in those other lame magic books with all those other stiffs. Who wants to go visit some famous dead guy? Sam pushed his glasses up. I do. Get a life, said Fred. So we go back to visit George Washington. We come back. What do we got? Nothing. But we go visit buried, chef, buried treasure. We come back. What do we got? Billions. Oh, that's brilliant, Sherlock. That is the same kind of bright idea that almost got us executed last time. Did you ever stop to think who buries treasure? Pirates! That's who. And do you know who... And do you know what pirates usually have? Pistols and cutlasses. That's what. And do you know what they do with those pistols and cutlasses? Shoot and stab people who are trying to steal their treasure. That's what. Come on, said Fred. I took care of the Black Knight, didn't I? What's a few pirates? Joe, you got any pictures of buried treasure in that book? I stuck the corner in my pocket and picked up the book. No. So there, said Sam. Fred cocked his arm and threw the baseball at Sam. But there is this spell called the all-purpose time warper. Hickory dickory dock, mouse turn back the clock. The, the clock won't strike till we go where we like. Bury treasure! yelled Fred. No, you jerk! yelled Sam. Fred threw his baseball and Sam ducked. Wisps of pale green mist began to swirl in my bedroom. But wait, I said, the spell only works. Fred's baseball slowed and then froze in midair, only inches away from my desk lamp. The book seemed to melt right out of my hand. The green mist swirled faster and higher, covering book, ball, bedroom, and all. Chapter 3 Oh, no is right, said Sam. We looked around the island for somewhere to hide. The choices were pretty slim. Our three trees or one big black rock. We climbed higher into our trees and did our best to look like coconuts. We couldn't see anything, but we could hear a splash of oars and bits of truly awful singing. <coughs> What do you do with a drunken pirate? What do you do with a drunken pirate? What do you do with a drunken pirate? Early in the morning. The small rowboat landed as I peeked through the leaves. Two guys unloaded a chest. One was tall, one was tall the other short. Both wore ragged pants and striped shirts. They were the ugliest and nastiest looking guys I've ever seen. Until I saw the third guy behind him. Behind them. He was twice as big and twice as nasty looking. He was the one with an awful singing voice. And boy did he have a face to match. Black hair stuck out of everywhere. His black eyebrows and mustache bristled out of the front. Long black strands fell down his back, and a monst and a monstrous black beard, with four pigtails braided and tied with ribbons off. The whole mess was smoking. But the worst part of 
about this guy was not his crazy hair or a black outfit. The worst part was that he was equipped just as Sam predicted with four pistols and a wicked looking cutlass. Bad luck, whispered Sam. I'll bet, I'll bet anything that's Blackbeard and not the Walt Disney version. Who's Blackbeard? whispered Fred from his tree. His real name was Edward Teach, said Sam. Some people say Some people say he was the craziest and meanest pirate of all time. Oh, said Fred. The two ragged guys staggered up the beach, lugging the chest between them. A giant black pirate counted off paces behind them. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, HALT! They stopped right under our trees. Dig here, lads. We bury our treasure, and we three be the wo only ones what know about it, eh? Who says I don't treat me prisoners well? Have another dot a rum. The big guy pulled a bottle out of one of his deep pockets in his long coat. He s took a swig and and passed it around. The two prisoners drank and started dig digging. The pirate leaned against a tree. The top of the the top of his tree corner hard hat was right below me. Something in his hair was fizzing fizz and smoking, and it smelled terrible. I wiggled my nose as quietly as I could and tried not to think about sneezing. The pirate jabbed the sand with his cutlass. Then he started in, started in with the singing again. <coughs> Come on, you bold rascals. What followed the sea to be way blow the man down Hunt in yourself then now listen to me Give me some time to yad a day day Just us three eh laddies Not a soul around Sam and Fred looked at me and but bugged their eyes out. A hot sun beat down. Flies buzzed around. The prisoners drank and dug. The bearded pirate kept singing. Horribly. My foot wedged behind a coconut. Went, went to sleep. My arm felt like they were going next. Finally, after what seemed like hours, the two guys finished digging. The pirate slid his cutlass back in his belt. Roar, mateys! That would be perfect. Now lower in there slowly, slowly. While the two prisoners were lowering the chest, the pirate pulled out two pistols and shot them both. The bodies and the chest fell in the bottom of the hole with an ugly thud. The crazy pirate laughed and started choking another song as he kicked sand in the grain. Sixteen men on a dead man's chest. Ho, 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 and a bottle of rum. Drink and the devil will do the rest. Yo, ho, ho, and a bottle of rum. A drop of sweat rolled off my nose and fell down toward the singing pirate. It landed right on his hat. It closed my eyes and held my breath. He stood up, looked around, and said, Just us three lads, guard our secret well. Ha ha ha. And there, and then he turned to go. That's when they decided, that's when 
the fly decided to land on Fred's nose. Fred wrinkled his nose, blinked, and shook his head. Then the fly flew. Fred's net cap slid right off his head, spinning down, 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 until it landed with an awful plop right at the toe of the pirate's big black boot. He froze. He looked at the hat. Then he looked slowly up, up, up the tree trunk of my tree. Our eyes met and my heart went numb as my foot. The black pirate glowed Arrgh! and grinned with a crazy smile. I swear I was I saw his eyes flashing red. Then he pulled out two pistols, aimed and fired. <laughs>